Quick, the Quick protocol was developed by Google in um, in 2014. They started an experiment with both their uh, Google front-end servers and uh, Google Chrome. So if you've been using Chrome um, and connecting to any of the Google services, Google Search, YouTube, Maps, whatever, there's a high probability you've been already using Quick for years now. Uh, Quick is now 35% of Google's egress traffic, which, according to their numbers, amounts to 7% of the whole traffic on the internet. And they, they shared some pretty, pretty impressive numbers. So for Google Search, the search latency, which is the time it takes for the Google Search page to completely load, uh, went down by 8%. And the YouTube rebuffer rate, that's when this, this annoying spinner appears, like more data is loading, the video stops, and then you have to wait. That went down by, by 18% on, on some connections, depending on the network conditions. And the important thing is, uh, these improvements are seen on the worst kind of connections. Connections with long RTT and with, um, with high packet loss. So this is a pretty impressive result. Uh, search and YouTube are highly optimized um, applications, and to to see to see an improvement of almost 20% just by switching to Quick, it's it's huge. So what is this Quick that I'm that I'm talking about? So a normal normal connection that you would have in a web browser, uh, it's running on the IP layer, which is responsible for routing the packets. On top of that, you have TCP. TCP provides a reliable byte stream. It takes care of retransmitting packets that are lost, dealing with reordering, making sure that you don't flood the network with too many packets, so it has some kind of congestion control. So on top of that, we have, we have the encryption layer, because well, this is 2018, we don't do anything unencrypted anymore. And on top of, of, your, um, of your TLS, you have, um, you have an application layer, for example, HTTP2. So where does Quick fit in here? So Quick sits here in the middle, and it consumes, it consumes a lot. So instead of running on TCP, Quick runs on top of UDP. UDP, it's just, it's just packets in the network. So Quick has to deal with all, all this uh, loss recovery stuff it has to retransmit packets uh, when they are lost. Um, Quick also has to deal with congestion control to not flood the network with too many packets. Um, Quick does all the crypto. And Quick also takes part of the application layer because Quick has, uh, has the streams that we initially had in, in HTTP2 built right into the, the transport. So when, when, you run, when you run Chrome, or when you run uh, HTTP over Quick, it's just it's a, it's just a small shim layer, which maps HTTP semantics onto Quick streams that's needed. So why why would we do that? The the the, the thing over TCP works works fine, doesn't it? What well, kind of does, but there are a bunch of problems that you can't solve with um, with TCP. And that's, that's the reason why people invented uh, Quick. For example, connection establishment. How do, we get, uh, how do we get a connection? So it starts with a TCP handshake. The client sends a SYN packet, and then the server wants to verify that the packet was actually sent by the, by the IP address that, that is on the packet. So it, it sends a, um, a SYN ACK packet back. And at that point, they have a they have a TCP connection and can write data. Client sends an ACK. And now, well, we still need the crypto handshake, right? So uh, TLS 1.2 and SecIO as well, I believe, takes, uh, takes two round trips. First, the client says, like, I would like to establish a, a secure connection. I support Cypher Suites A, B, and C. Pick one. Sends that to the server. Server picks one cipher suite, let's say, oh, I, I want to speak B. Sends that back to the client, then the client says, okay, here's my key share. Uh, sends that to the server, and the server replies with its key share, and at that moment, both of them have, a, a shared, have established a shared key and can start sending data on the connection. So as you can see, this takes 
three network round round trip times, which can be can be really painful if you are on a on a slow connection. Let's now have a look at um, HTTP. How does how does transferring a website work? And for our purpose, a website is just it's just a bunch of resources that that are on the server, and that the client wants to have. Well, we know how to establish a, a TLS connection, so we do that. Um, then the client um, uh, requests the first resource, and the server replies. As soon as it's there, the client requests the second one, and the same for the third resource. Can everybody see what's, what's wrong with this? Why, why don't we want to do this? Yeah. Right, we have, we have head of line blocking here. We have to wait for every object to first arrive before we can request the second object. And now imagine the first object is like a five megabyte image. So there's an easy solution for that. We know how to, how to establish one connection, so we can just do it a second time and a third time. So now every resource has, has its own connection, so there's no head of line blocking anymore problem solved, right? What's the problem with this? Why is that a problem? Yes, it's the congestion control. So every connection tries to, to get the, 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 a, share, um, a fair share of the bandwidth of the network. And to do that, a connection starts by just sending sending a little bit of data in the network, and then ramping up the amount of data it sends exponentially until a packet loss occurs, and then it scales back. So that works fine if you have, if you, if you have a lot of connections and they, they, they have a long time to find that equilibrium point. The problem is here, it, it takes some time, and most of the resources on the web are small. So we spend all the time with the connections competing with each other, not knowing how much bandwidth they are allowed to consume. So that's why Google invented uh, Speedy. Um, Speedy was started as an experiment in 2009, and Speedy had the concept of we just we, we get rid of all these all these separate connections, and we just use a single a single TCP connection. But then we introduce something on top of that, which is called streams. And the stream to the application basically behaves like a separate connection, but the stream multiplexer makes sure that, it, that it's all going just on one connection by adding some framing. So now the client can say, oh, I want these uh, three resources. It opens three streams, sends the requests, and the server replies with the three resources, all over a single connection. So now we finally solved the problem, right? Or is there anything problematic about that? Right. Right. So the problem is TCP doesn't know about streams. So let's say the, the packet that, that contains uh, this, this stream here gets lost, but all the other packets arrive. So we, 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 we could read from the, from the blue stream and the red stream. The data is all there. But TCP doesn't allow, allow us because TCP has to be, is an ordered byte stream. It has to be delivered in order. So the, the data is just sitting there in the kernel buffers waiting for the, the retransmission of the yellow packet to arrive. And this is a problem we can't solve with TCP. We need a transport that understands what streams are and is intelligent enough to, to deliver data uh, that arrives out of order. So there, there are a bunch of, of other problems. We already saw the, the latency of the, the setup, the three round trips we need, the head of line blocking that we have in TCP, a big problem in TCP is um, ossification. We can't really make changes to TCP now 
because they just don't work on the internet. Why is that? So the TCP header is all, all in the clear, and it contains a lot of information which is just intended for, for the endpoint. For example, in the TCP header, you have, um, you have the X, the acknowledgement for packets that were received. No one in the, in the path in between needs to know about that, but it's all there in the clear. And middle boxes have come to, to read those fields that are there and to act upon them. And not only that, um, they sometimes try to optimize traffic by inserting new values there, by rewriting uh, values in the TCP header. And that's, that worked prob probably once worked fine in some kind of benchmark. But if you now want to do something new with TCP, for example, TCP fast open or TCP multipath, and the stupid middle box doesn't understand about it because it was built before you came up with the idea, and it just changes some values there, then things break, and things break in unpredictable ways. And then, even if this just affects, let's say, 0.5% of the connections on the internet, you can't really roll out a, a change in TCP like that. So we are in, it's, it, it, takes, it takes more than a decade to actually define and roll out a new, a new extension to TCP if it's possible at all. And that's, that's not what we want. We want, we want a transports that are flexible, that we, can, that we can experiment with and that we can upgrade to the networks of the future. Good thing is, Quick solves all of these problems, and I will now show you how. So, first of all, the handshake. We need to establish a secure connection. And um, when Google invented Quick, uh, TLS 1.3 didn't exist. So. They invented a new, a new crypto protocol, Quick Crypto, which was optimized for, for uh, Quick, and it's still used by Chrome today. But when the Quick Working Group at the IETF was formed uh, about one and a half years ago, um, the first decision was made to switch that out because now TLS 1.3 is finally available and it has, it has all the features that we. Um, that Google, uh, that Google, uh, that Quick Crypto has, and uh, even some some more features. So we already saw the the uh, three round trips uh, we needed to establish the a normal TLS over TCP connection. How does that look on Quick? So Quick doesn't do a three-way handshake. Um, but in general, in Quick, we just assume that the client sent the right address on the packet. Why is that a safe assumption? So in, in, in Quick, there's a rule that the first packet needs to have a certain minimum size, and it's pretty big. It's 1,200 bytes of UDP payload. So a lot of the attacks that were possible with TCP by just sending a small SYN packet and then consuming a lot of resources on the server or by, by doing a, a reflection attack. It's not, it's not really feasible and quick because you have to, to send this massive first packet to the server. So servers in general will just, will just accept the first packet by the client, uh, which, which is the client hello of the, of the TLS 1.3 handshake, and just continue the handshake, thereby saving, saving that one round trip time. Um, if a server thinks that it's under attack, it can do something like the, um, like the three-way handshake. It basically works like, like a SYN cookie. So the server would send a, a token to the client, and the client has to come back with that token. So there's this, this defense mechanism exists, but it's expected that servers won't, will only use that under special conditions. And the normal case is that we save that one round trip. And then by using TLS 1.3, we can save another round trip. Uh, this works by, um, by the client pr uh, optimistically providing key shares. So in the client hello, client says, I support uh, Cypher Suites A, B, and C. 
oh, and by the way, here are my key shares for those Cypher Suites. And then the server uh, receives that, it picks Cypher Suite B, already gets the key share, replies with its own key share, and at that moment we have, a, uh, we have the um, encrypted connection after just one round trip time. And then we can send application data. It gets even better than that. If you talk to a server before, the server can send you a, a session ticket. And the next time you want to establish a connection, you can use the session ticket uh, to, um, to initiate an encrypted connection right away. So you can send application data with your first flight. It's a zero round trip handshake. So the way TLS works uh, over, over Quick is a lot different from what you have, uh, how it works on a TCP connection. On a TCP connection, you do the handshake, and then the application provides data to, to TLS. TLS encrypts the data, puts it into TLS records, and sends those TLS records on the wire. We don't want to do it that way in Quick because these... Um, the TLS records have to be read in order. So if we do it, if, if we were to write um, all, all our quick connection like this, we'd have head of line blocking again, head of line blocking on the crypto layer. So in quick, the um, TLS, as soon as the handshake completes, just exports a key, the session key to, to the quick layer. And then the quick layer deals with encrypting and decrypting data. And data is in, encrypted on a, on a packet level. So we use a, uh, an AEAD, authenticated encryption with associated data, to do that. And the associated data is the quick packet header. Every quick packet has a header that contains a little bit of information which unfortunately cannot be encrypted. But this, uh, this data is, um, is fed, fed into the AEAD, so it's, it's also covered by, by the uh, authentication tag. That means when I receive a quick packet, I can see, I can see if, the, uh, if the cipher text has been tampered with by an, uh, by an intermediary. And I can also see that the, that the unencrypted header uh, is exactly what the other peer sent. So th this, is, this is really, really good news, and it, it, it will help prevent ossification in Quick. So first of all, almost everything is encrypted, so Middlebox can't do anything with that. But then even the unencrypted parts, it can read the thing, it can read the fields, but it can't modify them. Otherwise, the connection will just break immediately. I will now show you a bit about the, uh, about the quick header. Um, every, every quick packet has, so a quick packet is just, the, is just sent as the, um, um, as the payload of a UDP packet. Um, and it starts with its own header. There are two types of headers. The long headers are used during the handshake and they, they are used to communicate um, some information. I will show you that later. And after that, when the handshake completes, we're using the short header, which is optimized to, to be as small as possible. So long header starts with a, with a type byte, identifying it as a long header. And then we have a version number. Version number is a four byte number. And this is, this is something new and quick. In TCP, we don't, we don't have a concept of versions. But quick comes, comes with a huge version number space. And when a, when a server receives the, uh, the initial packet from a client, it lo first looks at the version and sees if it supports that version. If it doesn't, it will send a version negotiation packet, which is basically just a list of versions that the server supports. Sends that to the client, and the client then has the chance to, to pick one of those versions if it supports one. Or, well, if it doesn't support one, then it's not a protocol that can speak. So this, this is really useful to, 
to make a, a protocol future proof. Uh, when, when Google started with Quick, uh, first in 2014, they started with Quick version 1, and we are now at Quick version 44. So there's, there's already been quite some evolution going on, and hopefully this will continue. And I hope that in uh, the Quick we'll use in 10 years or in 20 years will look completely different from what I'm presenting you today. This also gives people the, the opportunity to just, just run experiments. So if we think we, we can improve the protocol at some point, we can just create our own experimental quick version, um, do the changes, run an experiment, and see if it really turns out the way we, we like it. And if, if it does, we can, we can think about going, going back to the IETF and feeding that, that experience back into the standardization process of the next official quick version. So the, uh, after the version field, we have a couple of fields that, are, um, that contain connection IDs. This is also a new concept. There's no connection ID in TCP. In TCP, you, you identify a connection by its, um, by its IP address and by its port, which worked fine in the, in the early days of the internet. But now you have all the, all the mobile devices and you're on one Wi-Fi, you go out, you will switch to cellular, you switch to the next Wi-Fi, and every time you get a new IP address, and all your TCP connections break. With Quick, this is no longer the case. A connection is identified by the connection ID, so you can, can just switch between interfaces, and the other side will just, uh, just recognize that it's the same connection. Um, there's another nice feature which this, uh, which this, uh, this allows. So, um, what, and we, we will use that in libp2p quite extensively. We can run all connections on the same, on the same port because we, we, don't need, we don't need the port anymore to identify a connection. We, just, we can just have one quick listener on a port and we can dial out on the same port and then just demultiplex by looking at connection IDs. So these are the, the interesting fields in the long header. There's a length field, and then you already have the payload. So in the, in the short header, uh, we also have a typewrite, identifying it as a short header, the destination connection ID, and then um, already have the, the payload. So this is really, really optimized to send, to send lots of data with minimal overhead. The payload of a quick packet is composed of frames, and there are a lot of frames, and don't worry, I won't go through all of them. Uh, <laughs> the most important ones are the, let's say the first two ones. Stream data is carried in stream frames, and um, acknowledgements for received packets are carried in ACK frames. And when you when you when you compose a quick packet, you just serialize the frames one directly af one, one after the other. So for example, we could have ACK frame first and then two, two stream frames for carrying data for different streams. Streams in Quick um, come, come in two flavors. There are unidirectional streams, so you can open the stream and you can write to it. The other side, but the other side can only read, and it can't write any data back. And there are bidirectional streams where both peers can send and receive data on. Um, streams are always accepted in the same order that they were created by the peer, uh, which makes it really useful, um, re really useful for, for building protocols on top of that. Uh, and this even applies if packets are reordered and lost on the network. And in principle, you can, you can open as many streams as you want. Uh, there's a small caveat here. You can't just tell the peer, oh, I want to open 10 million streams and exhaust all, all of its RAM by creating that many streams. So every peer will say, will communicate during the handshake, uh, and, and later on, you can change that value. Um, how many 
it's basically how many streams you can open at the same time. But the, 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 over, over the lifetime of a connection, you can use as many streams as you want. It's a 62-bit space, so you will never run out of streams. Yes? Why would you want to do that? Uh, is there any way to disable the open accept order requirement? Uh, the question is, or, sorry. Um, so if I'm sending lots of requests that have their own streams, mm -hmm. uh, and one of these requests gets lost, I don't have all the other requests block on like that one request. Oh no, there's no blocking. So the, let's say you open you open stream stream five and six, and the packet for stream five gets lost. Mm -hmm. So I receive uh, stream six, but I know I know because this is a, a, a property of the protocol that you open the streams in order. So I can, in my API, I will return to return to the application stream five, which with no data, and stream six at the same time. So there, there, there's no head of line blocking by accepting in the same order. So you know that stream five must exist, so you return it. Yes. I see. Okay. That's nice. So another really important feature of Quick, which which I don't have any shiny slides for, but which probably cont um, contributes to a huge part to the improvements that Google is seeing, is the the loss recovery. And loss recovery algorithms are quite complicated. Um, so Quick builds on a lot of a lot of experience that people have from uh, TCP loss recovery, and. But Quick also le learned a couple of lessons from what, what is not, not going that well in TCP. For example, if you, if you retransmit a packet in TCP, this packet gets the same packet number as the packet that you think that was lost. And this is a problem when you now get an acknowledgement for that packet, because you don't know, was it, was it the packet that, was, that I originally sent, or was it the packet I sent as a retransmission? There's an ambiguity here that, you, that is very hard to resolve. And uh, TCP loss recovery algorithms struggle with that. So in Quick, we just say we, we use a new packet number for every packet that we send, no matter if it's a retransmission or not. So when we now receive an, an acknowledgement, we exactly know what happened. Uh, what also helps us in Quick is that we that we have the ACK as a frame, and we can we can encode a lot of information in that, and lot, a lot more than we can do in, in TCP. So let's say I, I receive 100 packets, but, those, uh, but like a range of 100 packets. But out of these 100 packets, like 20 packets were lost. In TCP, I couldn't, I couldn't accurately uh, communicate that information, which, which packets exactly were lost. I can only encode like three ranges, I believe. But in Quick, we can just we can just create an ACK frame that contains all of that information, and that feeds into the loss recovery algorithm of of the peer, and it knows exactly which packets were lost and how to recover from that. So another thing that's related to to that is congestion control. Uh, quick implementations today um, all, all they all live in user space. So it's really easy to update them and to run experiments, a lot easier than updating the, the kernel every time. So the ITF is currently specifying a version of, um, of, Reno, of, Reno, loss uh, of Reno congestion control. Uh, Chrome and my implementation are using a version of Cubic. And Chrome is al already running experiments with BBR. And I expect to see a lot of a lot of experimentation going on with new congestion control algorithms in the future, just because it's so easy to uh, to do these changes in user space. So that's the that's the quick protocol, and I will now show you a bit how it's how it's integrated into libp2p. Um, so first of all, streams. Streams are really easy to to map because the the quick streams 
um, they are basically basically the same as the PTP streams. They, it's just an almost perfect match um, for for the bidirectional streams. We don't have any unidirectional streams in in P2P, so we just don't use them. Uh, I had to work a little bit harder for the for the handshake. Um, we don't want to use SecIO anymore because that doesn't integrate with the way how Quick works. We need the TLS handshake. Um, so I had to design, design a handshake protocol for that. And that basically works this way. So we take the, the host key, the, the private key, and we, I create a self-signed certificate with that key. And, I, and then, then I, I, I sign, sign an intermediate chain um, using that CA, and I put that as a certificate chain in the in the TLS handshake, and uh, server and client both do that. So at the end of the handshake, you know the the certificate chain of your peer, and then you can go back, look at the the first certificate in the chain, get the public key, and calculate the the peer ID. So that's the way how we can verify that we actually connected to the peer that we wanted to connect to. So at, I, I want to give you some, some resources. Uh, the, the first one is the uh, homepage of the, the Quick Working Group, where the, where the specification lives. Second one is my implementation. Uh, it's called Quick Go. I'm not sure of, uh, how many of you know about the Caddy web server. It's a web server written completely in Go. And it's an awesome project, and it has uh, Quick support uh, provided by Quick Go. So if you're running, if you have a website and you want want it to be available on Quick, you can do that today. And the last one is the um, the Quick transport for lib P2P. Are there any questions? With the self-signed cert like that, if you were would that be an issue trying to talk to a browser-based node? That depends on the API that the browser is exposing. And since no browser is doing that yet, I, 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 we'll, we'll have to see what, what we'll get there. What does the path to finalization of Quick look like? So the Quick Working Group is uh, scheduled to deliver the specification by November this year. Um, we'll, we'll have to see if that, that really works out. It's not, not looking too bad at the moment. Um, <laughs> well, we, we already moved the deadline once, so. Oh, yeah, TLS 1.3 took a, took a really long time, and we were, we, we were already worrying if we are blocked, blo would we, if we would be blocked by that. The reason why that TLS 1.3 was late was exactly because of middle boxes that were interfering with the handshake. Uh, why is it called Quick? So it used to be the acronym for Quick UDP Internet Connections, but uh, the working group now decided that we don't want to call it that way anymore. So now it's just quick. So please forget about that. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a message-based mode for streams? Um, there's been a lot of talk about unreliable streams. Uh, and and um, I, I, I think you could build something message-based out of that, but it's not in scope for Quick version one. There will be a working group for a second version of Quick, and this will probably be one of the things that will be addressed there. Okay, thanks. So I was just looking at the repo, and uh, right now it only has support for RSA. Is there a plan for elliptic curves support soon? Uh, which repo? Yours. 
for, actually, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Go lib P2P quick oh, transport. Um, yes. Yes, plan for. Yes, uh, we, we should uh, add support for that. How soon? Um, w whenever I have the time to add that. Okay, okay no, no pressure. <laughs> always, always. Anybody else? I think I saw one more hand. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.